Now that we have a solve function that computes a value for every cell within our maze, the next step is to come up with some routines that guide our robot along the path indicated by the solve function. Uh, some routines that move our robot from cells that have higher values to lower values. And the first routine to make that happen is going to be something that tells our robot uh, which direction should it point. Uh, so let's suppose our robot is in this cell and it's pointed north. Um, our routine is going to ask uh, two basic questions. The first one is, is there a wall uh, separating this cell from the neighboring cells? So uh, it'll look north to begin with and it'll notice there's no wall here so then it'll ask the next question which is what's the value of that cell? And it'll record this. Uh, here we have a 9 so it's looking at 9 as the cell that the best neighboring cell value. Then it will look east and notice there's no wall so we actually think about moving east and we see that east has a, a value of 7 so that's better than 9 it's lower uh, and so now our robot is going to think east is the better direction to go. After it looks east it will look south and see that there's a 9 which is not better than 7 so it will continue thinking that east is the way to go and finally it will look west and see that there's a wall in the way and so going west is not really even an option. If we can uh, code that functionality into a find best neighbor function then we can figure out which direction we want our robot to point. It turns out we already have a good chunk of the program. Uh, in order to scan through the four neighboring cells, we can actually just go to our solve function within the nano maze, mouse maze class, and we're going to scroll down to uh, below where we set the target cell to the code that actually uh, sets the values for the values array. And I'm going to switch to. Uh, uh, s font size that's a little bit smaller so that we can see everything all at once here and what I'm trying to do is just grab the K loop this is the loop that works through uh, the four directions north east south and west I'm gonna go ahead and copy that Right below the solve function, I'm going to create another function called find best neighbor. And I'm going to just paste the code I copied. And I'm also going to hit control T to get the white space worked out. So now I have uh, a good part of the the find best neighbor function implemented already. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to font size that's a little bit bigger to make things a little easier for you to see. And then we're going to make some changes. The first two changes are I'm going to make some variables. Uh, my first variable is a byte that stores the, the value of the best neighbor so that we can compare it to the other neighbors and we start out with 255 because that's the worst case scenario if we can find any neighbor that's better than 255 that's a good starting point and then we can just keep on cycling through the rest to find an even better neighbor the next variable is the desired heading and we will assume that uh, we're going to just head north unless we can find a better direction so north is the same as zero in our program. And then I have to look through this code and make a few changes. So uh, we, we tore this out of the solve function and when, it, when this k loop, the loop that works through the directions, was in the solve function, it actually was applied to every single row and every single column of the, the maze. We're only worried about looking at the neighboring cells surrounding the mouse at this point. So instead of I and J representing the rows and the columns, I'm going to use mouse row and 
mouse column. I'll switch these here too. Now I'm going to skip on down to the if statement that actually changes values. This was the if statement that actually determined whether or not we wanted to change a value in the maze array and then implemented the change. What we need to do is change the condition here so that instead of asking if we want to change a value, we're asking ourselves, do we want to head this direction? And so instead of asking if it's equal to 255, the value of the neighboring cell, we're going to ask if that neighboring cell is less than the value of the best neighbor. So this value of the best neighbor starts out at 255, and then as soon as we look north, we're going to find a better neighbor than that. Um, and so then we'll do what's ever inside this if statement. And then it will look east, south, and west, always trying to improve this number. The next thing is here in the solve function, this line of code set the value of the maze array. We don't want to change the values anymore. What we actually want to do is read them. We want to read into the value of the best neighbor from the values array. So I'm looking into the values array, looking at the neighboring cell rows and cell column, and whatever value is there, I pop it into the value of the best neighbor. That's how we're constantly improving this number. After I do that, the next thing I want to do is set the row heading, so, or set my desired heading. So I'm going to say desired heading equals k. So I first look north. In, in the instance we just discussed, uh, where we, we had the mouse looking at a, a cell to the north that had a value of 9, what would happen is we'd go through this uh, chunk of code. It would ask if this value was less than 255. And it would say yes, and there's no wall in between them. So then it would jump into this code and set the value of the best neighbor from 255 to 9. This value would be a 9. And then it would set the desired heading to what k is. And the first time around, it's 0. So we, it would say head north. Then we would run through the code again, and it would say the value of the neighboring cell is now 7. Is that less than 9? And if the answer is yes, which it is, and there's no wall, then we would execute this line of code again. And we would see that value of the best neighbor is updated to that east cell, which it would pull from here, the value of 7. And the desired heading would be switched to k again, which the second time through the loop would have a value of 1. And then the when k is 2, when the loop's going through, uh, the k loop is being run for the third time, the value of the south cells 9 and that's not less than the value of the best neighbor at that at this point in time and so this code doesn't get executed and so then the last time we go through the k loop k has a value of 3 we hit this if statement and it sees that a wall does exist so this code doesn't get executed and k here that was a that was fed into the desired heading during the second iteration of the loop when k was equal to 1 is saved as our desired heading. Now that's all fine and dandy. We came up with a way to get a desired heading, but now we need to return that value so that we can do something useful with it. So right here, I am going to say return desired heading. And because I declared this function as a byte, this will allow me to run the function and retrieve a number that tells me where I want to point my mouse. To see if this is working, we're going to have to go to our main program and 
after we print the maze, we're going to say maze dot find best neighbor. And we're actually going to want to print this to the screen. So I'm going to say serial dot print line and close all of that in some parentheses. End it with a semicolon. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the mouse's position so that it matched our example. So instead of being a 3 here, this will be a 2. And now it's time to upload this code to our Arduino. And test it out. Here you can see the mouse's position, just like in our example, and the value that is returned by the find best neighbor function and it's a one because one corresponds to east our function was successful it did the it found the right direction um, I recommend that at this point in time you change the mouse's position and heading and uh, put it in several different places within the maze and make sure that when you run your code this value is updated correctly